You know, I wanted to first start with sort of, you know, explain what problem you're trying to solve for with your company and just give uh, us a little bit of a background of, of um, what it is that you're trying to do mm -hmm. and, and solve for. Yeah, so um, Web64 is uh, making the Google Analytics for society and um, Spotify for content mm -hmm. uh, in order to help people make more um, informed decisions. Um, so we're building a platform, a real-time semantic graph that uh, indexes everything published uh, online in the country and um, using uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to discover hidden connections um, in order to monitor how ideas grow and um, uh, like throughout society and see how events and, and news stories are changing people's perception. Now you have a very interesting approach to also building this uh, when we were talking earlier, I think you said well, you know, you, you really focused on specific uh, languages and countries, uh, sort of limiting the scope mm -hmm. of, um, you know, the data set. So tell us a little bit about sort of your approach to, uh, you know, how you're trying to find product market fit, essentially. Yeah, yeah so, so my approach to, to scaling, because it could be like a very big data project. Right. right. Uh, and Web64 is a very small bootstrapped company. So we're focusing on um, small countries with unique language. Uh, so that allows it with a relatively small uh, architecture to be able to handle all the content uh, published within the country. Um, and so once we've done one country and we've built some products and uh, see that that works, then we can add another country. You already have paying customers today, so you know, you, you're able to sustain a lot of your product development yeah. and, and getting to, to yes, market. So, it's a, so it's been uh, uh, kind of, uh, what's it called, the ramen profitable right. uh, since, since day one. That's uh, excellent. Of course, with my uh, experience with the media industry, I kind of knew I could build a product quickly uh, and launch it out there and um, at least get enough paying clients to kind of continue the development of the, of the bigger idea. I was curious, I, I, I usually ask a lot of the founders as to you know, how they name their companies and, mm. and, and I was curious, like, you know, why Web64? What's the story behind uh, it, it, the interesting yeah. story? Yeah, it has a bit of a, of a long history. Yeah. Um, so back in the 90s when I was in university, I was getting into like learning HTML and wanted to set up a website. Uh, and back then the, the web was very static. You had right. Flash, which could do animation, but with yeah. HTML, it was all very kind of very still. Static, yeah. And then I came across a website called uh, dog64.com and had this amazing uh, JavaScript animations. And I, di I didn't realize that was possible before. So you could click a bit and it would move and open up a menu and you could click that and that would move somewhere else. Right. And it kind of blew my mind, like what is possible with the current technologies if you, if you push it to the limits. Uh, so that was kind of my, my inspiration. And then I, I copied their name a bit <laughs> <laughs> and got Web64, which was initially um, Portal, as everything right. was back then was portals. So it's a portal for web developer resources. Um, so I had that for a while, but then the, the website kind of been uh, stagnant, had been used for, for years. Um, and then how about, you know, uh, what do you think of the, the community aspects uh, with Hatch? Has, has that been of any uh, help so far, or are you looking forward mm. to connecting with Yeah, I'm you know, looking forward founders. to connecting. So I've already been on the Slack channel Slack to, channels, to help other with right. what I can contribute. Yeah. And I hope as well when I need, need some help to, to be able to get uh, feedback from, from the community there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. How do you think about scaling your, your product? Uh, and ultimately when you'll have a team, right? Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, so that's been kind of one of the challenge. Uh, so I spent a lot of time uh, on that, figuring out kind of what was the right technology stack. Right. Uh, and especially within the databases, I'm using several different database types. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, I was experiencing, uh, experimenting a lot uh, with the different uh, databases to see what would be a good fit. Right. Uh, so when you're small, the, company, then you have limited resources to spend on maintaining all these systems. Right. So it needs to be systems that uh, require very little maintenance, but at the same time can scale to a significant level at least until it can take us to, uh, to the next to level, the next level when you can you have, have a bigger more, team to manage yeah. these uh, services. Yeah. yeah. What are some learnings uh, that you've had that you're applying uh, a to your business today, but also for other entrepreneurs, what are some uh, what is some advice that you have to share with all yeah. of those learnings? Well, from the dot com area, that was a bit crazy time. So people didn't like now you have the lean startup. You kind of people have learned kind of to measure things. Right. Uh, back then, you just had an idea and you could get lots of funding. Funding for it, yeah. And uh, then you burn it up very quickly. And even the the, the servers back then as well were extremely expensive. expensive yeah. So then suddenly the the 
money runs out and you haven't even sold anything. Right. So that's kind of one learning. That's why with Web64, I made sure that from day one, you have actual revenue to, to sustain the business. The business, exactly. Okay. Um, but also, I think uh, this is more for the bigger companies. You can see now, I think for founders, you have to be aware of all the unintended consequences of what you're building. If you're building something really right. big, it's going to have possibly negative side effects yep. that we aren't aware of. And we can see that kind of now with the social media platforms, that it started off as a great place where people could connect, but then over time, there can be negative consequences. Right. And I think as founders, we have a responsibility that to, if this happens, to detect it early and to, to do something about it. And, yeah. Uh, work with is it, yeah. that something that you worry about as you're building out your sort of semantic graph and, and insights? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, no, are, yeah. Are there maybe responsibilities that you take very seriously uh, in the uh, Yeah, yeah no, 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 exactly. If that gives an insight into kind of how uh, the, the part of society changing. works, then yeah. uh, you can always kind of game the system. Right. So if that's given to or some... Uh, Organization people have yeah. access in the to wrong something hands, in the it wrong can hands. Be, it, it can, can be very, uh, very detrimental. Uh, to side effect. So right. that's uh, definitely something I, I keep in my mind. All right. Well, Olaf, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, it's mm. really fascinating. The problem, a the problem that you're solving, uh, sort of how you're going about um, bootstrapping your business, and uh, and really wish you the best uh, in yeah. the Hatch program and building out your business. And looking forward to talking to you again soon, where where you. Um, where you continue to grow your, your business on our platform. Cool. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for having me.